he, he comes to you and he's like, Hey, let's make a glove that features good leather and has the correct short length and fitting for a player, usually like five to 11 years old at, at a decent price as well. Do you, do you remember that conversation that yeah. you guys uh, had? And then, you know, I went and asked for an R9 initially and they said, how about gamer? And that gives us some flexibility in pricing that gives us some flexibility in marketing that we uh-huh. can do with R9 because that's an inline series for them. Okay. They've yeah, yeah. got a story for R9, but Gamer is a past name. Yeah. So we can sort of market it to sell it however we want to. <laughs> but I do have some cool ones coming from you do? Rawlings. Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen out there. I think they're cool. Okay. They think they're cool. All right. We'll see if customers think they're cool. In our previous episode, we spoke with Caleb Gilland of the IT and development team here at Just Gloves, and we discussed the inefficiency that he saw in how youth gloves were being made and how this eventually led to his idea for the series of gloves carried at Just Gloves that is known as the Rawlings Gamer Contour Youth Gloves. However, Caleb's idea would have simply just been an idea if not for another member of our team here at Just Gloves, and that individual is our guest on the show today. Today, I'm welcoming in Ryan Whedon, the Director of Strategic Accounts to the Beyond the Glove podcast. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're glad to have you on. So I mentioned your title just a moment ago, Director of Strategic Accounts. So with job titles this year, I always feel like it can kind of be hard sometimes to get a true handle on what people do. But um, just explain to our listeners exactly what it is you do. For for sure. So uh, I manage the purchasing team here. So everything we sell... um, comes from the buy-in team. Mm-hmm. Um, I also handle the relationships with our strategic accounts. Um, I work with the marketing team, getting the manufacturer's marketing story to our marketing team and out mm-hmm. to the public and a lot of other things, but mostly uh, purchasing and working the relationships with our strategic vendors. Nice. And I always, I like, I like your job because uh, I feel like it is one of the cooler jobs within sure. the sports, uh, baseball, sporting goods industry uh, with, like baseball sporting goods companies, like they make their new awesome bats or gloves and you got your, your Rawlings, Marucci, Wilson. And besides the people within those companies, like the next person that probably gets to see a lot of that, that gear before it goes to market is you before anybody else. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those like pinch yourself. Yeah. Right. Like you Uh grow up circling things in a catalog. I want to buy this bat or this glove. And now it's like, we get to see it two years before it Uh hits the public and have our input on, how it actually goes out to the public. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's super cool. And I feel like one of your other sneaky skills is that oh, this for me on the glove side, I feel like Ryan is a sneaky, awesome. He knows what people want on their gloves when it comes to like <laughs> colors and webs. Like, I feel like you've done a ton of those. Sure. Haven't you by now? Yeah. Like having to make up, do this special, special makeups and stuff like yeah, that. I or, think uh, I've got an okay feel. It might be starting to pass me up a little <laughs> bit as I'm getting older. Um, I've had a lot of hits. Um, I did not see like the mic colors okay stuff yeah i yeah. mean right like pink, uh-huh. baby blue and black as a combo on a glove i think is awesome yeah but i would never have picked that so uh-huh. i'm aware that i might be aging myself <laughs> a little bit but i do have some cool ones coming from you do Rawlings. okay yeah. i haven't seen out there i think they're cool okay they think they're cool all right we'll see if customers think they're cool that's awesome it is one of my uh one of my sneaky pastimes is going to like the Rawlings custom glove builder every once in a while and I'm bored. I just kind of make, make designs for fun for sure, to, uh, yeah. to see what, what, what I can make that. It's like, Oh, I haven't seen that before yep. or something like that. So nice. Is that what you would say is your favorite thing about your role? Just the diversity that you have amongst whether you go ahead. There's a lot. I mean, my role here at pro athlete has so much flexibility mm-hmm. and the ability to do what you want and what you see as best for the company. That's my favorite thing about probably working here in mm-hmm. my position though, in the industry, I'd say the relationships are my favorite thing. I work with a lot of great people, a lot of cool companies. I get to do a lot of cool stuff with those people. And mm-hmm. by far that's what drives me. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. So for our Rawlings gamer contour gloves. So as you guys, if you listen to our previous episode, we spoke with Caleb whose idea it was to come up with this glove. And, um, so Caleb, if you guys remember, he found kind of two inefficiencies within youth, youth gloves. And, um, one of them was that youth gloves often feature the correct short length, but they have low quality leather. Um, and then also the youth gloves that do have good quality leather are too expensive or are also designed with a too long of a length or the wrong fitting for their hand and stuff like that. So, so Caleb had this idea from coaching his son Graham's team and he, he comes to you and he's like, Hey, let's make a glove that features good leather 
and has the correct short length and fitting for a player usually like five to 11 years old at, at a decent price as well. Do you, do you remember that conversation that yeah. you guys had? Yep, absolutely. And, and now that we're in a hybrid work environment, we uh-huh. don't see each other nearly as often. Yeah. Uh, Caleb and I aren't two that chat all day, every day on the computer. Like, uh-huh. you know, we all have our people that we chat with all yeah. the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so we happen to see each other in the office and he's like, Hey, I got an idea. Uh-huh. Uh, my son's been playing ball and I want him to have a good glove, but there's not any good gloves that fit his hands in terms of leather quality. Um, and I think this is a real problem for a lot of kids his age. So mm-hmm. I, I want to fix it. It's cool. It was a good idea. So, yeah. No, so it was, easy. they, uh, and I know that you, you're always thinking, you're thinking of the product ideas frequently and had that ever dawned on you before that, like that specific niche of between like your $50 gloves for youth players and then preventing the next step. A lot of people think is paying like multiple hundred dollars for a glove. Had you thought of that before? Just hadn't had time to uh, get after that spot. I really hadn't. And okay. It seemed like such an obvious uh-huh. you know, direction to go with the small gloves. There are small gloves out there. Mm-hmm. Um, Nakona makes yeah. an 11 inch glove. That's Alpha. almost $400 and people buy it. Mm-hmm. Um, the Pedroia fit, uh, revolution, you know, started yeah. in 2012 with the DP 15. I think in 2014, they expanded it to some other models where they're making gloves that had smaller hand sizes. Yeah. Like the PF 88, I think yeah. it's like 11 and a quarter. Or and it like that. showed that customers, um, at least in probably that travel ball age, maybe a little older than Caleb's kids, but probably like 11 to 14 were willing to, uh, and looking for that quality at the higher price points. Um, and so it just seemed natural to take it down yeah. in price and maybe in quality, but for a little bit younger customer to where it's down a little bit in quality, but the quality is still really high for a yeah. five to 10 year old kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know these gloves as kind of, as we were talking about earlier, it's like, it's, it's fantastic. And I love as well that it fits the youth hand, um, but also like an adult hand too. Yep. So like you and I both have young kids now and I was telling him that it's, it's always awesome to be able to, like have the youth glove and then also like it fits hit my son's hand, but I can take the glove off and put it on my hand too. I think is a huge thing for sure. Um, and so Rawlings, they've been rolling out their gamer series for a long time, uh, a number of years. And then I feel like around the time that we had started developing this glove, their contour fit was like relatively kind of a new, a new technology. And for those that don't know out there, the contour fit is basically every optimization that you can make to a hand stall to make it, great for a young player to use that's what the that's what the contour fit is it's going to have a smaller wrist opening the finger stalls come down so that they go right in between it's it's shorter as well so it's just a great glove for youth players overall and um so with rollings did you did you tell them like were you like hey i want the gamer series i want the contour fit put it on a glove or were you like hey this is something that we got and what what can you guys do with it? Yeah, there's a number of things that have to happen. So I go to them and I say, hey, uh, we've got an idea. We want to make a 10 inch and a 10 and a half inch glove uh, in R9 quality leather Mm -hmm. um, or better. And we think it'll work. But um, the first question they've got to answer is, can they actually make it? Uh Um, Now, in this case, they said, hey, we've got uh, 10 and 10 and a half inch patterns in our lower price gloves. So no problem. We can just make that with better leather. Mm -hmm. Every time that wouldn't be the case if we asked for a 16 inch slope. <laughs> say we've never made one of those before yeah. and we maybe aren't willing to do that. Yeah. Um, and then I guess, you know, they have some input on whether or not they think it's going to be successful. Um, at the end of the day, they probably would let us spend the money on it yeah. if we wanted it bad enough, but I do trust their opinion. <laughs> um, so I, I hear their input and they agreed that this was a good idea. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the last question is how many do we have to make? And mm-hmm. can we actually do that? And in this case, um, the minimums were pretty reasonable. Yeah. Um, the costs were low enough that it made sense. Mm-hmm. Um and then, you know, I went and asked for an R9 initially, and they said, how about Gamer? And that gives us some flexibility in pricing. That gives us some flexibility in marketing that we uh-huh. wouldn't do with R9 because that's an inline series for them. Okay. They've yeah. got a story for R9, but Gamer is a past name. Yeah. So we can sort of market it and yeah. sell it however we would like to. Uh huh. Yeah, no, the Gamer, I always love, the, the Gamer series are fantastic just with, you know, we have the Gamer XLE on our site right now with the speed shell backing and all of that. And then this one as well, they actually almost look kind of like like brother sister gloves yeah. with that one. So, um, no, that's awesome. So, ultimately, they go ahead and they craft two gloves for us to sell. We got our 10-inch that I got right here. It's got 
uh, the basket web on it. And then we got the 11 inch, sorry, excuse me. We got 10 inch here, 10 and a half inch over there. The 10 and a half inch has the eye web. So you tell them, we, you're like, hey, we got this idea. We want to build these two gloves to uh, provide something that customers aren't getting right now. How long did the development take of that glove uh, from like when you told them about it to, I, I believe it was like, was it late fall 22 that we were able to get it on the site? Yep. So um, we probably took that to them in February of that year. Oh, really? Um, the the initial sampling might take two weeks. They send it really? to their factory. They get it aired back over, um, send it to us for approval typically. And mm-hmm. then they also check it out and see if they need to make any you know structural changes to it. They'll look mm-hmm. at a 10-inch glove and say, you know, is this structurally sound for a 10 inch glove? Yeah. If it is, and if we like it, then it goes into production and that could take six months ish Mm -hmm. most of the time. So that's, that's about the lead time is however long it takes us to approve the graphics and then six months for production. Really? It's why I guess you always think that that process would be like years, but it's kind of cool to hear (laughs) that. I'm sure their product development is years in the, in the future. Yeah. Um, mostly because they're working with technology let's it's, you know say bats they are looking at a way to make a bat perform better yeah gloves are a little different but then they're working on new names new graphics way out in the future they've got to trademark all of those things too yeah um, you know, we're just tagging along and saying hey can we do a gamer in a pattern you already create yeah and we just did black in this case so there wasn't much to approve graphically either but yeah it can take a long time if we get crazy okay and then when caleb so when we spoke with caleb it sounded like he was he really loved the look of it with the black and the silver did you kind of did you go hands off on your part like when it came to that and let him kind of run the ship as far as that goes i'm or? in general i would be more for black or brown I okay think that appeals more to um the masses and also you got to consider who's buying glove so yeah i think a 12 13 14 year old kid probably has more influence on what his parents are buying than an eight-year-old yeah um, 12 13 14 might be on social media seeing that yeah. everybody's using pink and blue right now mm-hmm. um, yeah eight-year-olds probably not he just wants what he sees on the field more than likely or his dad's making the decision mom's making the decision and yeah i think in that case black and brown appeals more yeah. to the mom and dad now 20 yeah. years from now it's probably gonna be pink and blue <laughs> hey, yeah it could be it'll be interesting i feel like well you said your tastes change a little bit so maybe we'll uh everybody eventually reverts back to your blacks yeah. and browns and <laughs> but i think i wanted to not give it a reason to fail right yeah like black and brown is going to sell yeah um the other colors have a chance not to um mm. they have a chance to go crazy too but yeah they also have a chance to just sit because nobody wants that color yeah so were you when it's pretty crazy. If you go to our website and you type in the youth filter, the first glove that comes up, I think is the 10 and a half inch. Were you, were you surprised by how well the gloves actually, like, did you think they were going to hit like that? Or I think I did. Um, like I mentioned, there are more expensive, higher quality, small gloves that mm-hmm. sell really well for us. This seemed pretty natural, especially at that price point yeah. um, at $120 or wherever we started it at. Um, mm-hmm. I think I thought it would go well. I don't know if I could have told you the 10 and a half would be better than the 10. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the basket web. uh, Little Derek Jeter. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I think, you know, we all started with a basket web probably. Uh, Ours were probably 12 inches. Our hands (laughs) were way too small for them. I did 12 and a half inch. Yeah. Like like second grade. (laughs) Mine had Barry Bond's signature. Uh So it was probably 12 and a half also. Yeah. It was a basket web. And, uh, so I maybe thought that one would do better because of mm-hmm. parents picking out the gloves, but also, um, you know, we're in a time where middle infielders from five years old to 35 years old are wearing eye webs and yeah. more specific positional patterns. So it doesn't surprise me that this is the yeah. better seller of the two right now. It is cool. It, it's just cool to see that, you know, like you, you, I feel like a lot of times you, you think something's going to hit and it doesn't, but it's really neat that this has gone over as well. As for it sure. Has, so it's pretty neat. So Ryan, thanks for coming on before we end any episode. We always do three strikes with our guest, So it's kind of like uh, the pitch clock and then will be, you got 20 seconds to answer, but you can go over. We won't, we won't, uh, we won't punish you for that. But so right now, uh, just gloves, as I'm sure that all of you know, from listening to prior episodes, we're in Kansas city. So the Kansas City Royals were reeling after a hot start to the season. Do you think we make the playoffs in 2024? Well, if the Chiefs were in the same scenario, <laughs> the question would be, are they going to be the one seed or not? not <laughs> yeah. The yeah. 
the Royals don't have the track record to get the benefit of the doubt. It's true. Um, so it's a tough question. I'm going to say yes. I love it. Um, there's three gonna, wild card spots. They're going to bounce back this week. There we go. Um, I don't know when this will air, but hopefully by the time it's out, they've won six more games this week and nobody's even <laughs> considering that they lost to the Dodgers and the Yankees. So <laughs> I think they'll be all right. I love it. I, I was actually, for the first time, I'm actually excited by this. In June, I looked at the wild card standings yeah. the other day just just so to see. I. I think we were like a game or a half a game out. Yep. So I'm I'm encouraged by that. So um, that's funny. So in kind of speaking to the same time of year, it is summer. And yesterday we had 100 degree temps in Kansas City. I think we're going to have it again today. So what is your ideal strategy for beating the heat in summer? This doesn't have to be practical. It can be <laughs> like if you had unlimited yeah. funds, what would you do? Would you go to the lake? Travel to the beach or go north to like Minnesota or New Hampshire or something like that. So I'm going north in a couple of weeks. I'm oh, yeah. going to Canada. Nice. Cannot wait to get out of the hundred. <laughs> I don't think people give Kansas City the credit for how bad the summers oh, and yeah. how bad the winters are here. Like mm-hmm. we get zero and a hundred <laughs> yeah. and then spring and fall are okay. Yeah. Um Spring you, was pretty good this year. Spring was great. Yeah. May was great. Um if you have to be here, you've got to go to a pool or a lake. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But definitely be around water. But mm-hmm. I would definitely get out of here. If you're on the beach, it at least feels like it should be hot. If yeah. you're up north, it's not hot. So I'm good with either one of those. I would prefer to go north. My wife would probably prefer to go to the beach, which means I go to the beach more. I like your north. I'm a I'm a summer mountain person. Yeah. Like I love the mountains in the yep. summer. That's usually my uh, my go to. So all right, the third one: baseball extremes question. Ryan, you played baseball in college, so I know that you can you can answer this. So what is worth it being so cold? that when you throw the baseball, you have no idea where it's going to go or it being so hot that when you swing a baseball bat, it's going to slip out of your hands because it's sweat. Cold baseball is the worst (laughs) of anything. Um, (laughs) I didn't have to throw that much in the outfield. Uh So whatever. Yeah. But I hit lead off in two hole. I could hit. Okay. Uh I just wanted to bunt when it was cold. There you go. (laughs) You know, we'd shovel snow off the field and I'd stand up there and watch the first pitch go by and just be like, I'm swinging today. <laughs> um, hot baseball, while it, you know, 100 degrees is not all that fun to play in. You don't have to warm up. Your arm it's never true. hurts when it's 100 degrees. Uh-huh. Um, you know, you could go not catch a fly ball the whole game, come back <laughs> in, have a couple innings before you bat again. You go right back out to the field, play catch. Your arm feels great. So I'd take hot all day over cold baseball. There you go. I always worry. So with you know being an, I was an outfielder as well. You can always pray that you don't have to throw the baseball in that game Uh, with a bat. If it is sweaty and like, it's not working out with the, the the pine tar situation is lacking. uh, You could be, cause you pretty much have to swing the bat when you go up there, you could be in trouble. So I remember playing in Oklahoma one time in the summer and being like, I don't know what to do. Like going up to the plate. So nice. That's funny. Well, Ryan, thanks for joining us today. Uh, It's a great conversation to have just that in-depth, uh, People on the show, I think that they really appreciate kind of hearing that in-depth side of gloves that you always see the finished product, but you don't always get to see what actually led to the glove being what it is. So thanks for sharing that part with us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. For those of you guys listening out there, we appreciate you joining us. If you guys want to help the show out at all, please just tell everybody about about the show. Uh, We go ahead and put up posts on Instagram. If you see that, go ahead and put it on your story. Um, We'd love any help. And Uh, letting others know about the show if you guys are watching on youtube give us a thumbs up if you're listening on spotify or apple go ahead and give us the five-star review thanks till next time bye